Hey folks, good afternoon. It's actually Easter today. Happy Sunday and happy Easter everyone. I am out here and I am rinsing out my winter waterer. I just turned on the seasonal field lines um, for everybody. Yesterday we've got good non-freezing weather, uh, warm weather in the forecast, so I think we're done with um, hard freezes for the rest of the year. And Although Minnesota can always surprise you. So anyhow, I just want to give you a breakdown of this um, Cobet water we installed last summer. And I haven't really done a video yet, so figured I've got it kind of apart. I'm cleaning it. I just, uh, there was some gunk and just junk and mud in the bottom. So I, I just rinsed it out and then I put the lid on for the summer. Um, so what we did is we actually installed it right along this fence line here. Um, this fence was already here before we began leasing the property because there's a horticulture market garden over there. So they put the fence in for deer, but we've got this half of it for running animals. And we really thought it would be nice to be able to water in the winter on this side. There's about five or six acres here as well as out here on this side where they did spend most of their winter. So we decided to split the fence line, which... Um, it was kind of tricky, but it wasn't impossible. And what I ended up doing is just you know, cutting the fence, building this trap door here um, so that I can shut this um, and latch this here and they can still drink from both sides, but they obviously can't get from one side to the other. But I also can lift it up so I can you know, work up the water if I need to. So here's, here's how this works. It's actually really simple. There's no electricity required for these Cobet waterers, which is one of the things that was super attractive to me about them. It just uses geothermal heat um, to keep the water uh, from freezing solid. You will get, I mean, when it's really cold, um, you will get some ice on the top. You have to break on the coldest days. But uh, basically anything above 10 Fahrenheit, I found with not a lot of wind. thing about not doing electric is you have to pay for the cost to bury electric out and then I've heard horror stories of um, electricity and shorts around water and cattle getting shocked when they come to water and then them not wanting to drink. Um, there was actually a couple summers ago there was an incident close by here where a farmer lost a whole bunch of cows on a hot afternoon because he was letting them drink out of their winter water supply and there was a short or something and they ended up losing I think like 25 or 30 head so anyhow electricity and water don't mix and also just for the cost of installation ease of installation this is just super simple so this is um you can see all the way down there's like we dug basically or close like about 10 foot down uh, there's two tubes so there's this top tube you can see Right there is where it comes together. There's these pins on the side. Um, and then there's a longer tube. There's insulation about, I would say, well, there's another eight foot of insulation. Then there's a bottom tube that's four foot. So anyhow, there's probably insulation going at least six foot into the ground. So below the frost line here. And then there's a tube, obviously, that comes out. This has settled quite a bit. And I'm not quite done with this project, so I'm going to be coming back here this summer. I'll shoot another video. I need to lay rock here, but I'm going to dig it down a little bit after it all settles and um, put fabric down, put some R10 insulation board, and then put gravel on top. And that'll help keep the area right around the water from um, help keep more insulation and keep it uh, from freezing up. Uh, I didn't finish this till literally like November last year, so I decided to wait till everything settled um, before I did the rock project. So that's why. It is the way it is in a little bit. They tore it up a little bit, but I'm actually gonna finish this and spread this hay and I've been putting some oats down just to kind of get something growing right around the water. But anyhow, back to the water. Yeah, so pretty simple design. We bored in water lines. That's just a uh, inch and a quarter or one inch, one inch line um, from the well. They bored it in about, I don't know, seven, eight feet down there. And then we just dug a hole here, set the pipe, and then you just, it's pretty simple. This is a flexible, a flexible rubber tube with a banjo coupler and an off, you know, a valve right there. And then you just connect it at the bottom of the tank right here. It's a very simple valve with a ball here. Um, so that's really all there is to it. In fact, there's folks that have been making their own uh, using, you know, culverts. They'll put a smaller culvert inside a bigger culvert and then fill it with foam insulation. Just various. Um, 
ideas around the same concept for building your own geothermal water. Um, but I, um, so far, you know, one winter of use, I think we had a pretty average winter here in Minnesota as far as cold and wind. So we to see it in super extreme times. Um, yeah, I did have to break ice twice a day. Um, I just used a rubber mallet uh, when it was the most extreme cold. I think we'll do better this coming year because um, as the dirt settles back in around here and once I get that insulation board, that'll help keep the frost from going so deep um, and it'll end up being a warmer water or so. Um, yeah, this probably settled right here where I'm standing. Oh, I don't know, like six, the soil was all the way up to here, so it settled like six inches. So once everything settles back down uh, around it, it'll um, perform even better, I'm confident. So anywho, I'm gonna finish this up, but I just thought I would show you this real quick. But yeah, Cobat's been a great company to work with. Um, they've been doing these waters for I think 25, 30 years now. So uh, they've got a couple different models. Mine is the largest, it's the LB. Um, with just a regular um, regular float system. It's the simplest. So anyhow, yeah, look them up online. And um, yeah, very cost efficient. I think it's very cost efficient. I've seen these in, in use in Canada, North Dakota, all over Minnesota. So uh, they're pretty well, pretty well used and they've got a lot, pretty good reputation. So hey, I'm gonna sign off today, finish this up and uh, go get some other stuff done. But I uh, thought I'd just give you a peek. So happy Sunday and everyone take care.